Hi guys, this is Ben from Ben's RPG Pile, and today we're going to show you how to make your very own Dungeons & Dragons bar game. Uh, some of you might have read uh, the post that we did on this on bensrpgpile.com, um, but uh, uh, we actually went and played this uh, particular idea in one of our games, and it went really well, and so a video of it seemed like uh, that would be a good idea because it would just be a little bit easier to understand uh, how everything was set up. Um, everything that we're going to cover today is going to be on the November 4th blog post. So all the links, um, all the files to download of everything we made, those are all on our blog. So I encourage everybody to pop over there and you'll see we've done a lot of the work uh, uh, to make this idea uh, work in your own campaign a uh, snap. So let's set the scene. The group has killed Paldemar in Thunderspire Labyrinth and they have headed back to town for a restock uh, before they head out and uh, begin to play the next module, Pyramid of Shadows. As the DM, I really wanted something fun and memorable in town. I just didn't want it to be a, we buy our supplies and we leave. You know, that there's nothing fun about that. So I was determined to make this work. So um, uh, the way I've done it is I created a little uh, tavern using Dwarven Forge pieces, one of my absolute favorites. And um, uh, basically the group is in town and they hear uh, all sorts of loud, uh, like a raucous atmosphere coming from the tavern and they decide to wet their whistle. Let's see what happens next. So the first thing we try to do is we try to uh, use a game that the group can relate to. Um, very popular uh, holiday neighborhood party kind of game is called Left Center Right LCR. And uh, you can buy this game on Amazon for about 10 bucks. There's a link in our blog post for you. Uh, but uh, there's not much to it. You pretty much got this little tube and inside that tube are uh, three dice and then a bunch of poker chips, right? And um, uh, it's really simple, but basically the way it works is each person at the table starts with three chips. I'm just going to put a couple out here just so you can see what I'm talking about, right? Each person starts out with with uh, three chips. Move these over a little bit, and um, uh, you got your dice. You got three dice, and what you do is the person whose turn it is. You all sit around a table. You go clockwise and you roll the dice, okay? Okay, so what these mean is left means you would pass a chip uh, to your left, dot means you keep a chip, and dot means you keep a chip, okay? If I were to roll the C for center, one goes into the middle of the pot, like so. Um, and then the next person goes, I I gotta go like, yeah, so next person goes, okay? Ah, okay, this time I keep two, and I put one to the center. I'm rolling pretty good. Third guy goes, oh wow, keeps all three. I rolled three three dots. And you basically just go around the table like that over and over again till everybody has passed their chips away and only one person has chips left. Basically what's gonna happen is uh, all the chips are gonna go into the center until one person's the only guy with chips. The guy with chips wins the game. That simple, huh? Uh, so now we're going to kind of show you how we adopted left, center, right into a Dungeons and Dragons tavern game uh, called Duck, Dodge, and Parry. Ooh, that's yeah, another good roll. So here we go, guys. Let's let's show you how we changed left, center, right into Duck, Dodge, Parry. Um, first thing is uh, our dice. Those are going to stay the same. We're not going to change those at all. We're going to uh, use their, all the markings on the dice and the three dice exactly how they are. That's the core rule of the game. That's going to stay exactly the same. Okay. Uh, 
what we're going to do is we're going to say the characters mosey up to a table to play uh, the game, and they each have to pay a 500 gold piece um, entry fee. Uh, these are uh, fun campaign coins that you can buy. Um, and I love them because they just feel good, and it feels like you're using them and interacting. It's fun to throw them onto the table and collect them like a poker chip pot kind of thing. Uh, but uh, uh, so everybody's going to have to pay 500 gold. Remember, the group has just won the module Thunderspire and Labyrinth. They got all sorts of cash. As the DM, you want to get some of that cash back because you kind of want to equal the game out a little bit. So this is a great way to pull in some of those riches so we just don't go buy every magic item on the planet. Okay, so here are those plastic chips. Remember those? Each character is supposed to get three of them. Well, that's no fun. So we're going to replace those plastic chips with more campaign coins. All right, we're going to do a, a, a gold, copper, and a silver. There's a little gold piece. There's our uh, fun copper piece. It's like some badass uh, dragon kind of skull, helmet kind of thing. And then now uh, we do a 50 uh, silver piece. Okay, yeah. All right, so each character is going to get uh, those chips in front of them. All right. And again, you're kind of putting a little nostalgia in there. So uh, next thing we're going to do is winnings. So uh, to really kind of spice the game up, um, I'm going to put stuff in the pot that helps uh, a particular player uh, within our game. And I made a bunch of item cards, like so. And I'm going to put these um, uh, into the pot as the group goes to kind of get them fired up about um, what they could win. Uh, the, the deal is, is that uh, gold, they, they don't get too excited about gold pieces and such, but getting powers and uh, special items, and I do a lot of one-off things, one-time use things, that gets their juices flowing. Okay, so that's, a, that's how we're going to kind of treat a, a big old pot. Um, some quick ground rules, though. Everything that the, the one person wins uh, in Duck, Dodge, and Parry they won't be able to transfer it to anybody. So, otherwise, there wouldn't be much point to this game. So, if Bookman, our crazy wizard over here, if he wins, these items are essentially bonded to him. He can't take this particular item card and pass it over to Red Dawn. He's got to keep it for himself. Uh, okay, and then uh, I'm sure you're asking, well, how are you going to introduce these these particular these items into the pot? The way I'm going to do that is each round. As they go around the table, I'm going to pretend there's this huge crowd circled around the table and that uh, there's a bunch of NPCs playing at the table with them. And the NPCs are slowly falling out, but um, they all threw something into the pot to try to for the chance to play. So one NPC said, hey, um, uh, I want in. I don't have 500 gold, but I've got this special little uh, gemstone and it's a, a discount damage dealer. Um, that's my entry, and then he's gonna. I'm gonna pretend that he loses, but his item stays in the pot. You know that kind of thing. Um, and then it's really just gonna. The game's gonna keep going fictitiously, uh, where only the party's left, and that's how this big old pot grew. So that's kind of my move there. Uh, so uh, now, let, why don't we talk about uh, what you, what the group can actually win? So typically the the way left, center, right is played is everybody usually throws in a buck or two. And if you're playing with a big group of uh, friends and family, uh, that pot gets pretty big and that's kind of the draw to win. But dollars don't have too much use in D&D. &D. They might cover a bunch of sugary snacks and all that stuff, but we don't want to give away dollars. So here's what we're going to do, uh, remembering that uh, this is kind of the game pot. So first thing is we're going to give a special action point. And this action point goes with the other one that the party member might have, and you essentially can use two this two action points in one round. So this is kind of a, a special bonus action point. That's one thing. Next thing is uh, someone will have thrown in a monkey's paw, and this is just a basic luck charm, and <clears throat> the way it works is the group pretty much gets to re-roll one dice roll. Okay, one time use. Next thing is healing potions. Our group loves healing potions, and the, we have a house rule on healing potions. 
we don't uh, make the player take a surge. We just say you get us trade 10 hit points. So these come in rather handy. So the group always loves a good healing potion they can guzzle. Next, we have a second chance, second wind. And basically what this is, is you get to take your second wind as a free action, which is usually just reserved for a dwarf. So same thing, one time single use, but uh, very handy to a particular player. And I also mentioned the um, discount damage dealer, little homage to Aaron Rodgers there. Uh, and basically what this is, is on a single uh, successful hit, the party member is going to be able to add a D12 to their damage uh, one time use, but who doesn't love to roll an extra D12 uh, on their uh, damage? And then we're certainly going to let them get their 500 gold pieces back that they entered. And then finally, we're going to do um, some fortune cards. Uh, there'll be two packs in the middle. They'll get to open each one up and take one card out of each and use that card in the game. So that's a pretty hefty pot. I think that would make any D&D uh, &D player kind of salivate to win that. So how did it play? Played pretty good. We um, uh, we had a blast with it, guys. A few people in our game group had played it before. Uh, the ones who hadn't, the rules were so simple that it was a piece of cake for them to uh, pick it up. Uh, the DM can play. The DM can either be an NPC. Uh, so if, he, if the DM wins, the group doesn't get anything. So there's a lot of motivation for the DM to lose. Everybody is kind of rooting against him. Uh, or um, often there'll be one player at the table who can't make it that night. If he misses out on duck, dodge, and parry, you just play for him. So, uh, And then you get to tell him uh, what a great game he missed. Um, the way I revealed the treasure um, is I had it where people were making side bets and throwing stuff into the pot. Um, I should have just stuck with my original thought was, hey, there were a whole bunch of people playing this game around a big table. The group has knocked all of them out of the game, and only the party remains, hence the big pot of winnings. That's a little more logical, and that kind of makes more sense. So um, there you have it. Uh, at the very least, hey, pick up uh, left, center, right uh, for the upcoming holidays. You will love it. It's so darn easy, and uh, uh, it's just a blast. So until next time, we'll talk to you later. See ya. Take a little time for sunshine, take a whole lot of time for love. Take time to praise and thank heaven up above. Take your life as it may come, cause boy, it'll be gone soon. Take a little time for howling at the moon. Keep your eyes open, gotta keep your feet on solid ground You gotta take time to take a real good look at everything you've found Take your life as it may come before it'll be gone soon Take a little time for howling at the moon Take a little time for sunshine, take a whole lot of time for love Take time to praise and thank heaven up above You gotta make music, gotta make music. Raise your voice with joy every day You got a life to live for You got a lifetime to stay And so I try to keep my eyes open Try to live my life from day to day But seems a life's unhappiness Can't believe me straight Till I saw a friend Go down hard and maybe sing a different tune Let me take a little time for howling at the moon Take a little time for sunshine Take a whole lot of time for love Take time to praise and thank heaven up above Take your life as it may come Cause boy, it'll be gone soon Take a little time 